Hey everyone, it's Leslie Dale here at the TFP, and uh, school's out. School's out for for this sure. one, my daughter Elle. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be talking about. Say hi, Elle. Hi. <laughs> We're going to be talking about a different school that is heating things up, UTC. That's why our sports analyst extraordinaire, mm. Gene Henley, is joining us, and David Cobb. So what's going on? We've heard all the, all the chatter last week about Huseman, and now, now this. Yeah, well, I mean, Russ Huseman has you know, taken his talents to Richmond, um, and Tom Arth last night uh, Came out that he was going to be the next UTC coach, and that was in, you know that was announced this morning officially, made official. So, so you were there. Tom Arth, who's ten days younger than I am, will be the next head football coach at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. How old is that? Twenty five. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. <laughs> Plus yeah. six. Thirty five. So. Okay. I'm I'm good with my age. So. Mm -hmm. Thirty five. So, You're young guy. It. Seems like he's I mean, he's a proven winner. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about him. Well, he, let me see, he played at John Carroll, which is where he's coming from. He played college there for four years. I think he was a really good quarterback there. He was um, he played for the Indianapolis Colts. He was a backup to Peyton Manning for three years, three seasons. Then I was made it to the training camp of the Green Bay Packers in 2006. I was cut maybe before the first preseason game. I believe that's, well, that's fairly accurate. Bounced around in some other leagues for a couple years and has been coaching pretty much since 2011. Oh. He, was, he was an offensive coordinator for three years. He spent the last four years as a head coach. So, uh, you know, the guy has a really good record, was the national coach of the year at the Division Three level. He's hungry. Uh, so I think he's going to be a really, I think he's going to be a really good hire for the program. Mm -hmm. What do you think about all this? So what I know about it is primarily through following Gene's coverage of this uh, coaching search, Gene and Stephen Hargis, who have been all over it. But I've become a pretty devout Mox follower uh, following the football and basketball programs. And uh, to use a phrase that you often use, Leslie, to be devil's advocate here, uh -oh. one of the things that I saw some of the fans who were responding to your coverage expressing skepticism over was... I love these. I'll go. Let's get this started. <laughs> John Carroll's a Division III uh, school. Obviously, uh, he knocked off Mount Union this year, and that's a big deal because Mount Union had won a ridiculous number of games in a row. You know, but going from D3 to D1, that's a big jump. And, I mean, how do you, how do you make that adjustment? And aren't there, wouldn't there be some concerns? I think it all comes in how you build your staff from this point forward. I mean, he has he's spent pretty much his entire life in the Midwest, Ohio, um, Indiana, places like Wisconsin, places like that. But, you know, the guy has southern ties. He has southern connections. I love to think, like, a couple of his players are from Florida. So, I mean, he kind of understands He kind of understands the south. And, and I think the biggest part about it is, I mean, it, it, would, it would almost be, to me, disrespectful for somebody to completely disrespect, disregard what I've done because it wasn't at a level that you're familiar with. Because, A, you know, Sam Houston State's coach, Sam Houston State, who beat UTC, uh, to end their season this year. Their head coach came from a Division three school and took over a top-level program in Delaware. But because it's not UTC, people don't care about that. Because, you know, they don't, they don't realize it, so they just want to lash out. Tom Arth completely killed his interview. He had a great vision for the program. He understands it. He's got ties to this area. He's got good connections to this area. So, again, I, I think from this point forward, the best thing to do is let this guy assemble the staff that he feels like best he you know, feels like he can best win with. Uh, it seems like he's already bringing he's bringing at least one guy with him um, from John Carroll. It's so weird to say that, uh, you know. So let him build his staff. Let him see what he's got going on and go from there. Elle, do you know what sport we're talking about? Um, what sport? What sport? <laughs> I've taught her so well. Guess. Uh, football. There you She's go. On it. She's She's one. One. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what you you're mentioning his vision. What did he say his vision is? Well, I haven't heard that yet. Okay. Because I mean, everything that I've talked to was just from different people. Um, I haven't actually heard what the vision is. I'm pretty sure I'll hear that tomorrow when he's announced. Okay. Uh, when he's introduced, I should say. That was I, my next question. Right. Right. He'll be he'll be <laughs> yeah. introduced tomorrow at noon. Okay. Um, at the Stadium Club at Finley Stadium and. Should go live. 
anything's possible. We'll see. We'll see how we'll see how crazy that day is. Yeah. Uh, but he, you know, he has a vision. He it seems like he understands that there there's going to be a, probably a negative perception of him, mm -hmm. but. There's not a single person that goes into this industry not thinking they can succeed. That's why people take over bad programs mm -hmm. because they think that they'll be the one to turn it around. I mean, like if you have any fear, Texas forever. Right. If if you have any fear going into a job, you should not take that job. And that's just kind of my thought on it. And if, if you have any fear going into a job, if if you don't think you're going to be capable of accomplishing the job that you're that you're about to do, some people then you say do not. do what you're scared of though. Like, just, well, if you're scared, like, get a dog. That's my. That's what I tell <laughs> other people. It's but it's like, like I mean, face your like face right. your fear. Though. Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. If you if you can't go into an industry like this where you're going to be criticized at right. every no, turn, I hear what you're saying there. then you're in the wrong profession. You probably need to choose a new profession. So. Yeah. So, Gene, yeah. Um, what are the chances that Peyton Manning is coming on board as the offensive coordinator? I would say <laughs> zero point zero 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 one. So I know that uh, you can't be the guy to bring it up because you might get in trouble. But as a fan, not a non-sports writer who's just sort of been following the whole thing, I thought it was interesting that once Arth's name got thrown out there, people started trying to tie his hiring to Peyton Manning in some way. You know, because like you mentioned, Arth backed up Peyton for the uh, Indianapolis Colts for a couple of seasons. Uh, and so obviously, you know, they know each other and Peyton knows UTC's athletic director, David Blackburn, from when they were both at, at UTK together. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't think it's possible that Peyton got on the phone and said, yo, David, this Tom, he's a good guy. You need to give him the work. I think that gets you, I think that gets you a foot to the door. I think that gets him an interview. It doesn't get him a job. I mean, he was one of six guys to interview for the job. I mean, he had to stand out because I mean I can look as good as I want but there's other people that look good too and if I can't stand out and if I can't be special in my own way then I'm not going to get the job or the whatever I'm, that I'm setting out for it because there's other people that's e there, are, you know, there were other people that applied for this job that were equally as qualified. So is anyone excited for this this poor coach? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean I think that there are. I mean you seem like hopeful. Well about I'm, I'm realistic like the athletic director has not failed yet on a hire. Um, Will Wade comes out of nowhere to, uh, to be the first men's basketball coach of the David Blackburn era. He wins 40 games in two years, uh, takes a team that was probably was picked like maybe bottom half of the league, gets them 18 wins. The next team wins 22. They finish second in the league both years. He takes a job at VCU. He goes out and gets Matt McCall, who just goes out and wins 29 games last year, makes it to the NCAA tournament, um, and obviously he's doing really well this year as well. So he has not failed at a hire, and David good. Blackburn is a football guy. So, mm -hmm. like, I have no horse in the race. They could go 0-11. I'm still going to get paid the exact same thing, so mm -hmm. I don't really care what they do. But, I mean, from that perspective, I'm thinking this guy can – this guy, I'm going to. I believe that this guy's going to go out and get the, the best choice, the right choice, because he hasn't, proved, you know, hasn't proved me wrong yet. Looks like it'll be a kind of a baptism by fire though next season. Uh, the schedule, correct me if I'm wrong. Jacksonville State, uh, LSU, UT Martin to start the season off for a new coach. Yeah, and the Jacksonville State game is interesting because it's the kickoff classic, which means it'll be played a week before any other college football game is played. It'll be played on national television, for obviously, and with people being starved for football at that point because the only thing that people are going to have seen are preseason NFL games and high school games. So the very first college football game that people see next year will be UTC versus Jacksonville State. And... It's not going to be easy. I mean, Jacksonville State's losing a fair share. You know, they're losing a good amount of people, too. Um, then you go, you know, you play LSU. Oh, it's going to be the very first home game of the Ed Orgeron air. Uh, so that's I, probably looking at maybe a 7 o'clock at night game in, in Death Valley in front of like 85, 90, 100,000 people. And then your home opener is against the Tennessee Martin team that the last time they came here, they beat you pretty handily. So it's not going to challenge. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why we're talking about this guy. I'll sure, I hope he's out recruiting right now because he's yeah. doing stuff, doing whatever, working well, on he game plans. Young and hungry. I, so I think, you never know. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to turn out to be a really good choice. Just, I think he's he's got a ton of potential. I mean, he's won. I mean, he's he won a lot. I mean, forty and eight. I mean. 
you, you have a record like that, I've got to I've got at least listen to what you're talking about. Because, I'm rooting for him. Yeah, I don't care where you are. You go 40 and 8, that's not easy. And then you go to the next level, you figure out how to be successful at that level. I mean, if if we're going to complain about a D3 coach going to, you know, making this sort of jump, we don't care when baseball players go from double-A to the bigs. We don't care when kids go from one year of college to the pros. We, we don't care in any level. You know, we don't question a lot of people when they make these sort of decisions. His jump is substantial. I get it. But I'm not going to say the kid, the guy doesn't okay. know what he's doing. Right, he exactly. can't get it done just right. because he hasn't done it this level before. He's going to he'll assemble, he'll assemble a staff of people, of guys who have done it this level before, and he'll figure it out. And I think he'll be really good. So anyway. if he replicates the success at UTC that he's had at John Carroll University, you know, 40 and eight, and what four years as coach there. How long can UTC reasonably expect to hold on to a guy who's just in his mid thirties? Because I mean, I know oh. Houston was at UTC for eight, eight or nine eight, eight or nine seasons. years, and he went to UTC. So you know, you you figure you got an alum of the university who's a little bit older. You you can't even you know you hold on to him for eight or nine years or whatever. So how long maybe a guy in his thirties, you know, if, if he's got that you know those sort of D one aspirations, how long you know can you really? expect to maybe hold on to him. Well, I think we'll have to ask what his aspirations are because, I mean, the guy did come from his alma mater. I mean, he, you know, UTC plucked him away from his alma mater. So that's that's obviously not an easy call. I mean, and it, maybe he just wants – maybe he just wants to be happy somewhere. Maybe he feels like he can build some for 15 or so years, you know, 15, 20 years and make, it, you know, make them successful. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's probably going to be maybe a little bump in pay. I'm not exactly sure what John Carroll pays, but it's probably going to be a little bump in pay. Yeah, do we have maybe, any uh, idea how much he's getting paid? Not yet. Um, again, all this stuff, I think, is being ironed out now. Uh, but I think with the, the bump, maybe a bump in pay, uh, you know, the the hope of, it, of improved facilities here, you know, a, a fan base that is thirsty <laughs> to maintain success, you know, and... You know, obviously, they're you know, for the most part. I'd say that they're unhappy with the hire, but that's just because it's like with every fan base. We haven't heard of the guys, so therefore we don't like them. Like we don't, we'll, we'll quote unquote give them a chance, but really we don't believe the guy because we thought that this guy over here should have got the job, and that there was obviously a name that a lot of people thought was going to get the job, and he didn't get it. You know, maybe interview better next time. Maybe have some other things not going the way they they currently are at your current situation, and maybe you don't have that going on. I mean, don't really want to go into detail, but I mean, I know there was a guy that a lot of people wanted, and there are multiple reasons why he's not going to be here now. Okay. Do you know who he's talking about? I'm presuming it's not Philip uh. Fulmer. <laughs> Fulmer. Uh, <laughs> I kind of forgot that guy. It happened. Uh, it did, that, that, did, that was kind of out there. I don't think it was out there the way people right. took it. There was never... There was never yeah. a thought that he'd come in and be the savior of the UTC program. I think that's pretty <laughs> ridiculous. But uh, yeah, to go from late 50s to Fulmer, who's, I think, the last time I checked, a little older than late 50s, it's, you know, oh. I just don't see it. I mean, when you're, when you're five or so years away from retirement, and that's why I think part of the reason why Russ took the Richmond job, when you, when you get older. I don't obviously I'm not trying to like rest as old, but when you get older, you have to start thinking about uh, that next big payday. When you start to get towards the backside of your career, you have to start thinking about what, that big sort of payday. And you couldn't you can't turn down the amount of money that Richmond was offering. Yeah, you, know, you got to keep going. It, it's an opportunity uh, you kind of get to a point where maybe you get stale of where you are. And I think that's kind of what happened with Russ. Did you cry at his farewell press conference? No, I, I, I shook his hand. That's that's all. That's the most I can do. I'm not going to hug a man that I've covered. I, I think that's I think that's ridiculous and unprofessional. But that's me. I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I'm not here. I'm not here to be your best friend. I mean, I'm your beat writer. I want to have a good relationship with you, and I want to do all that God. stuff. Is this your last day or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, but um, I, I think that that's just pretty much a case where, you know. Like I want to have a healthy respect for you, and I uh, hope you certainly have one for me. But when I mean, when it's time to go, you know, you know, best luck to you, your future endeavors, and let's move on. Now, here's different. I mean, we all work together here. That's 
I work with like I have a journalist report. I mean, head coach relationship. I don't expect them to love me. I expect them to get mad at me half the time, and I expect them to love me half the time. So yeah, I got to be a good reporter. Yeah, half the people like what you say, and half the people hate it. Get a short or great story. I'm not so. here to make friends, people. Oh, she's out. Bye. Dollars and Bye. Cents, she is done. <laughs> she's done. She's done. I mean, she was good, right? She made it for a while. Yeah. Just in time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, without saying a word. She didn't really have much to add to the conversation. I was really disappointed that she hired. wasn't really going to start asking about personnel <laughs> right. or any of the any of that stuff. I, I was, know. I was ready for the tough, the hard, hard hitting questions from Mel. So. Yeah. You know what kind of offense um, Arth ran at John Carroll? Have you looked at that at all? Yeah, I've, I've, I've checked his, you know, his offense actually has, he's done a really good job of suiting his offense to his person. Okay, I see I was going to ask because they got, the Mox had this Mississippi State transfer coming in who I guess could theoretically provide some QB competition, you know, next year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because, I mean, I heard from multiple people, uh, maybe she said this, maybe she shouldn't, I'd heard from multiple people that when he, when he came here, uh, he was told there was A, no quarterback competition for next season, and B, um, I don't know if he'd been told, but I've heard from a couple sources that he wouldn't even play quarterback in the season. And, uh, and so, that, so now it's a new staff. You have a guy who played quarterback in the league. Maybe he looks at a player like that and it's like, man, I can win with this guy. And so it'll be interesting just to kind of see what happens. I think with a lot of pieces, um, I just received word that um, a former a Chattanooga area player made by the name of Daryl Bridges wants to come to UTC. Played through it, played the last three seasons at Presbyterian. Um, just wanted to be here. He has one more year of eligibility left, and uh, he really, really wants to transfer to UTC. And I actually talked to him on the way up here. It's part of the reason I was late, um, but. You know, he, he's interested. He wants us to get his name in there. The kid ran for probably 3,000 yards in his three seasons at Presbyterian, so he's he's good. He's productive. So it, it'll be there, – there's some things going on. There's a, there's a lot of things at play that with the new coaching staff, there's a lot of stuff up in the air. Um, quick interjection. We've got a question from a reader. Uh, what are – Chris Clausen says, what are players saying about the hire? Have you talked to any players yet? Do you hear anything on – Twitter or otherwise? I think if you're a player, most of what I've kind of gathered hasn't been overly positive, but I think that's kind of for the same reason. A lot of people thought that. Like the fans. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think a lot of people, I mean, there's, so, there's uncertainty. And sometimes, you know, there are people, there are kids going to their senior year, they're used to a certain level of success. You know, the coach that brought you in leaves, and then here comes a guy who quite honestly, nobody's ever really heard of. And so it, I think there's reason for skepticism. I think that there are a number of players who are somewhat skeptical. And But, I mean, again, I brought up the basketball example. You know, UTC basketball players, when Will Wade left and the assistant coach didn't get the job, a couple of them lashed out on Twitter and immediately started talking about transfer. They met the head coach, he had conversations with them, and the two players I'm thinking out are probably two of the most productive players on that team right now, and they love the guy. So I think it is, you obviously, when you hear a name, you have to question, is this going to work? And then you meet the guy, and then maybe your perception changes, and I kind of think that's where a lot of these players fall. It's like you kind of in wait and see mode, just like the rest of us, to see if mm -hmm. this guy is as good, and if he can be as, if he can relate to us in a way that will make us successful. It's so like similar to lost. what David talked about, you know, moving through divisions, I guess the players may be having a lot of those same doubts. They have only access to more or less the same information we do at this point. Well, right? and I, I mean, think that also the fact that there were a couple coaches that were currently on staff that received interviews. And I yeah. think when you are used to, it's very hard to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And when you're used to things going a certain way, you you know, if if you if a guy leaves, a part of your, your part of your thought process is that, Okay, well, if we just get this guy, then we can kind of maintain what we've got going on right now as far as the guys. Everybody loves coach such and such. Everybody, you know, this is who we relate to. You well. know what he expects. You're, you're yeah, we know exactly. There, you don't, yeah. You're not having to get out of your comfort zone to do things differently. Maybe the coach doesn't practice the same times. Maybe a lot of his policies aren't the same way. It's going to be a lot of change, and that's, you know, especially when you're talking about 21, 22, well, just go 18 to 22-year-old kids. Sometimes change is 
it's scary. You know? And a I coach mean, is a very personal for these kids, you know, more than you. You're dealing with a coach in a professional way, but for these kids, there's a mentorship uh, mm-hmm. aspect to it. There's you know almost a surrogate parent in some cases. These are the years so, where kids, especially a lot of athletes, and I can say this as a former college athlete, this is the time when there's there's excitement and fear all at the same time yeah. about you. It's it's one thing, obviously, if you're just go if you go as a student and you're there. You know, you just you're there, but it's a little different when you are an athlete, just simply because every kid that goes to wherever level has aspir ninety a, a vast percentage. I can't talk. A vast majority of them have aspirations of continuing to play. Well, that's and, why you got to be pumped about the fact that Tom Arth actually did play in the NFL. Be it. David, you're making too much sense. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here. If, if you're here to make sense, then you're in the wrong place. Now, if you want to jump off a cliff because we haven't heard of the guy, then uh, that's that's what I'm here for. I'm here to shoot down those theories. I'm not here for you to make sense. I'm sorry. Thank but yeah, you. it, it yeah, is. You got to you know, respect the guy. You can say, okay, this guy, you know, he may not have actually gotten any regular season snaps, but he's hung around the locker room. I guess Tony Dungy was the coach oh. probably when the Colt, when he was with the mm-hmm. Colts. So, you know, okay, this guy's, you know, hung around guys like Tony Dungy and Peyton Manning. You know, I can, you know, maybe give him a shot. And they're looking at bringing in, from what I've gathered, they're going to bring, he's going to bring the defensive coordinator with him. And if you look at the stats of that defensive coordinator, that's a top five defense in the country. It may not be at the level that you know people are accustomed to, but I'm going to trust that a guy can figure out how to suit person. In three in in four seasons, he ran three different defenses, which means he's willing to adjust to whoever. He ran a four three, he ran a three four, he ran a four two five. And if there's peak football people watching, they know exactly what I'm talking about, and they understand that to adjust from year to year and be able to recruit players who can adjust year to year just based on your personnel. I think that that's huge, and that says a lot about the staff. I mean, you can poo-poo the schedule and all that all you want to, but my thought is I'm going to believe that a guy who's gone 40-8 and eight in four years as a head coach and was the national coach of the year will be able to figure out how to coach at this level, just like he was at the last one. Okay. I think it sounds like an exciting time. It's going to be exciting to see what happens. It should be. I mean, I think it's kind of weird for me because I'm actually older than the men's basketball and the football coaches now. Um, <laughs> I, I went from being 20, 21 years younger than the head football coach to now 10 days older. So, uh, well, Weeds knows what that's like. You can ask him. I, I know, I, like, it's, and he's not going to see this, so I can say that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make the coaches refer to me as sir. Sir. I'm going to do that. Like, you know, respect your elders. So, uh, it, but it'll, I, I think it'll be... I think it's going to be interesting because I do think that we're at a very interesting time for UTC. I mean, they lost a lot. They lost basically four All-Americans. Um, yeah. They lost, I think, 12 starters if you count offense, defense, and special teams. They uh, lost some backups. I mean, they didn't lose massive numbers. I think maybe only about 17 players total. But when you look at just what that – senior class is meant, I mean, they're the winningest class of all time at UTC. That may or may not be saying a lot. I don't know. Um, but when you lose a class like that, then there is going to be, I've, I've, I've kept saying this all day, like it, there was going to be a somewhat of a drop off as far as the expectations, regardless if Russ had come back or if they had to bring in a new guy. And, you know, I don't think that that means that they're going to just shoot for three and eight or anything like that, I think that they can still be competitive. They can still win the vast majority of their games. They'll, have, they'll either be favored or have a really good chance of winning every game on their schedule aside from, you know, LSU. And, you know, and like, yeah, and if you can do that, and if you're and if his first season he's, he has the team competitive, he has them winning, then I think people will kind of get over it a little quicker, especially when you realize that this guy hasn't even had a chance to really implement his – program yet so yeah that's just kind of why I'm in this whole defense of let's figure let's wait let's figure out who this guy is first and, and I've always noticed too that after the introductory press conference which for Tom Arth is tomorrow fans usually change their tune a bit because it's hard to lose the opening press conference if you're a brand new coach you've had a couple of days to uh, tailor your, your message and so you can usually come across in a way that kind of sells people on your resume and, and, and I think you know I felt the same way I remember talking to you know, I'm more tied into basketball than football. So when Matt was hired as the new basketball coach, I knew 
Careful. some guys to talk to, to have conversations with, to get a feel for this guy. So I, I knew that they were getting what was perceived to be a really good coach. Um, you know, and then I actually talked to Matt, and I left that presser thinking, this guy's really, really good. And obviously having a chance to meet uh, Tom yet, I'll obviously meet him tomorrow with everybody else, but just seeing some YouTube videos and just kind of reading some of the stuff that he said, it seems as though this guy knows what he's doing. I mean, he seems like he's... He's going to win tomorrow. And then now the next thing will to be to win in August, to win in September, to win in October, to win in October. As long as he doesn't start talking about being a champion of life, I think people in Tennessee will... will uh, now I'll say this much. The first time he... Brick. Yeah, I was about to say this. I was literally about to say it. Brick by brick. The first time he said, he uses like a brick by brick reference, I'm, I'm standing up and walking out. Yeah, and I was, Kiffin's I've got, already done I've that. Got, He's already jumped that shark at this yeah, point. Now so. I've got Kentucky connections and I want to hear Yahtzee, <laughs> brick by brick. Any of the things that Kentucky, Tennessee coaches do, what, figure out what works best for you and just roll with it because I think at this point, man, people will respect you if you just try to do things with your style, your flair. But please... It, do not I just don't want to hear you know I, I just don't want to hear the brick by brick so if you're listening please right. and you'll hear from him tomorrow so, yeah man Tom if you're if you're watching this which I'm pretty sure you're not <laughs> please do not come in here and try to use some you know cheesy quote see now he to may do it just that. to spite you <laughs> and he'll look at me and say welcome to and say I'm glad thank you all matter of fact hey Gene brick by brick <laughs> I, I do. It's just as someone looking from the outside in, and I, I know it's hard to look forward sometimes, but, you know, we talk about giving them a chance. We talk about, you know, let's – obviously it's too early for all the speculation that's happening. But what what is the transition? What How long does something like that take where the honeymoon period, you know, how long how long is that before he's kind of established and you've got a good idea of the framework he's going to set up and then it's fair to then start throwing grenades uh, well, or, or, or bouquets? From football fans? Yeah. August. August. Yeah, it depends what happens in that first game. I mean, like it's. I, I get it. Like so, you football get fans year. are. No, yeah. You know, well, I'm not saying over a year. I mean, I'm saying it's, the second his first game happens, yeah. they're going to start. If like if he wins, if he goes out there and wins that game on national television, then people are going to start anointing him the next coach in Knoxville. If he goes out there and gets beat in a close game, then people say that he should he he's a D three coach who can't figure out how to win the close one. Right. If he gets blown out, then we probably need to go ahead and fire him and we should have got such and such to begin with. <laughs> so I mean you're not going to you're not going to you're either gonna blow everybody away in that first game or you're going to completely make a ton of people jump off your wagon. Like what Russ had going for him when he took the job was the fact that expectations were so low that if he just went out there he said it. If he won more games than he lost. Yeah, he, no, he's, he actually said it. He said, man, you know what? That first year, if I just started 1-0, I knew that I had everybody won. He started 1-0, and I think they went 6-5 and five that year or 5-6. and six, And he's just – yeah, he went 6-5 and five that first year and just kind of just went from there. And, uh, again, like they, they've got the pieces to have a good season. How good, I don't know. Um, yeah, how good, I think we'll see. But – it's they have the talent to be competitive in every single game of his first season, and then it'll just come down to can he figure out ways to win, you know, close contests. Because I mean, that was one thing that was kind of against Russ, and he always reminded me of it. I think every time he won a close game, he told me what his record was, which was like I don't know, I can't remember now, like three and ten games decided by three points or less or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, but it was just, you know, and it's, I don't know. Like I said, I, I just think that this guy, I think this guy is going to be better than what people are giving him credit for now because he actually, unlike Russ, he has a resume of being a head coach and winning. Russ came here with no head coaching resume. How would that work out for him? So you add four years, you know, four successful mm -hmm. years, yeah, and I mean that's no that's no shot at Russ. That's just simply said he was a defensive coordinator who became the head coach at his alma mater, and he t made them he took them from one and eleven to a top ten, top fifteen program, probably top ten program in the FCS. I think he deserves massive credit for it. Now, Tom Mars thing is how can I get back to that level and maybe even get to the next level? He needs to get Peyton to be his offensive coordinator. 
Oh, You're going to go on the record with that? No. Well, how, how, hey. well, well, not, well, how about John Gruden <laughs> being quarterback? <laughs> yeah. Let's bring just guess, bring them all back. Let's see. Who else can we get? What about Eli? Yeah, Dick. <laughs> right? I mean, I mean what, what's Dick's thing? I mean, can Buddy Dick Ryan? Is, yeah, I mean, can we get Rex Ryan to be his DC? I mean, if, if this whole Brandon Staley thing doesn't work out, it's, I don't know. If, Pate's not going to be anything, and I know, I know you're just joking, but <laughs> it's, I mean, if people are trying to connect all these dots, like, look, man, Peyton probably got the guy in the interview, but he didn't get the guy the job. I mean, like, I'm pretty, it was, was I mean, what's Peyton going to say? Look, if you don't hire this guy, we're not friends anymore. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm not on, being yeah. your coach yeah, and exactly. not being your athletic it, director. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, what was that, uh, Framily, or what was it, Sprint, or who had that, my Framily? Family plan, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, friends and family. Yeah, yeah like, it, like, what are you gonna do? Take you off yeah. here? No, it's T Mobile. Yeah, take, my faves, my faves. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take you out of my top eight on MySpace. Yeah, that, that would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, I get it. That <laughs> that is me, I'm back. That's where we're going. I mean, that's exactly where we are. It seems like, but at least I, I, I do think Peyton probably got him an interview. And I think it's that, fun to that's where it is. No, no, it, it cracks me up because everybody. Tie, you know, connected those dots. Peyton got in the job. I'm like, Peyton didn't get anybody a job. Calm like, down, mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah. Peyton. Everybody has connections. Peyton. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Budweiser himself. Uh, <laughs> that's the marketing genius of We Peyton tried to Peyton. get him on Peyton to be on the Facebook Live today, but I guess he was busy. He was so. busy. Yeah. Uh, well, he was using all those, he was using all that pool, you know. To, Text yeah. later. Yeah, he was probably flying Tom Marth down here. That's right. Uh, yeah. The jet. Yeah. Exactly. And the Peyton jet. The Manning it's family a, uh, airplane. It's got a big Peyton face on the side of it. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Well, I got to go play another sport. Uh, mom. Holidays. That's right. Yeah. Why doesn't daycare cover the holidays? That's the most, school, you know what you I mean? mean? School? Yeah, school, daycare, <laughs> anything. Yeah, I mean, it right. seems like they're it like, oh, like they miss, when school's stretch. out, we're out. You know about yeah, this, school too. School systems, yeah. yeah, they missed it. But they, they really could have just gone... You know, three sixty five. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Really it's not like we get to stop working just because you're out of school. Right. That's right. So I've got to just mask it yeah, because all here. of a sudden, yeah, <laughs> you didn't want to be in school. You for know, two the money weeks. that feeds that child, like that's we're we're getting that right exactly. now. Yeah. So we're so, trying to make it. Trying now, to, but it's yeah. Like, yeah, you, you got a way. Yeah. You got a while. You have a while. So David Cobb next. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You're right. the only person at this table. My team is full. My team is full. Okay, thank you for all the analytics, and we're interested to hear from the coach, Coach Arth. New yeah, UTC come talk to us, man. Tomorrow, well, and tomorrow he's being announced. So yeah, we'll I challenge you to come you. here. Come, Sit come to this, this program. program. <laughs> you know, Stephen A. Smith first take on come the to this table and debate. Cobb, yeah. Does that Gene make me Headley. skip Bayless? <laughs> no, <laughs> please don't ever do that again. Sure, I need to take back everything. Take I a said. shower. Real quick. I actually kind of like you know the devil's advocate sports commentator yeah. role, you know, because I'm just yeah. a news guy yeah. over here, so I just have the same questions yeah. as any fan yeah. would, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. Fan. Yeah. That, that's, and that's good. I think those I actually enjoy, I think people thought I was like mad last night. I'm like, I enjoy being able to snap back at people. I just like about, the drama. It's the game, all. right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's just fun. I, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's not like, you read it and it sounds a whole lot worse than how it was said. It, we like, mean it all in love. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. If I was all the emotions of sports. Yeah, trust me, my tone would change completely on Twitter if I was really ticked off. They yeah. say my, my the things I say may have some. If you were to read it, it would maybe have like some question marks and dollar signs. Like it would, I wouldn't be able to type out the word. Yeah, probably. when you read it, when you read his tweets, just add a little wink in there. <laughs> That's that's the proper way to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's put a big happy face. I know you're joking. <laughs> or a lull. <laughs> exactly. SMH. SMH. <laughs> that's my least favorite. All right. SMDH. Yeah, I know you're serious. <laughs> I've got to go find my, my daughter. So uh, I look forward to seeing what happens. I think everybody does. We can all agree on that. We look forward to seeing what happens. Good times ahead. Good okay. times ahead. UTC. See gotcha. y'all.